Hello friends, welcome to RHCSA certification training brought to you by Skillpedia, skillpedia.co, transforming talent. A lot of courses offered by the portal. You can see they are divided into multiple categories, cloud computing, OpenStack cloud, AWS cloud, Oracle cloud, then databases, then Linux, then core technologies, DevOps, monitoring and management. So a lot of courses, hardcore technical people, these are for experienced people, not for freshers, let me tell you. This is session 2, RHCSA certifications, RHCSA certification prerequisites. My name is Ram. As I talked about in the previous session, this is section 1, consists of 5 lectures. We already done that in the first part. And this is second lecture, RHCSA prerequisites, this session. After that, we have lab setup, getting ready for the installation, then installing CentOS 8 for the lab setup, and then uh, CentOS 8 advanced installation or RHL 8 advanced installation. Agenda of the session is virtual machines, why Red Hat certifications are different, architecture supported, RAM requirement, hard drive options, networking, virtual machine options, virtualization types, getting Red Hat Enterprise Linux, format of the downloaded content, third party rebuilds which are trademark free and source code, uh, source code availability for this uh, RHL 8 because ultimately it is open source. Get used to virtual machines. If you have not uh, worked with virtual machines, get ready and get used to. You need to have some experience with bash shell, user administration, system monitoring, basic networking, software updates, etc. The RHCSA assumes that you know how to configure a physical machine to host virtual guests. So the virtual host or the host machine or the physical machine is based on KVM, kernel virtualization modules. Because rebuild distributions such as CentOS allows you to configure a default HTTP server and configure a default FTP server, it is easier to get started with that. Some facts about Red Hat certification exams. They are actually your test on hands-on. They test your ability to work so these certification tests are hands-on exams. When time starts, you'll be faced with a live system, which will have some problems related to the topic, related to the topic being covered. And you have to fix it. And it must sustain a reboot, let me tell you. You're given actual configuration problem associated with the exam objective. You won't have internet access during the exam. You will have access to the con documentation such as manual pages or info pages of Linux. Red Hat provides the exam in electronic format. This exam allows you to demonstrate your ability to configure live physical and virtual systems. It covers the skills required to configure and administer a Linux workstation in the enterprise. Duration is two and a half hours. Any changes that are made must survive a reboot. Most of the time what happens is participants forget to uh, configure the setting which will sustain a reboot. Therefore, they never get marks for that. Though they feel that they have done uh, all the correction, uh, all the settings and they have configured everything correctly. After the given task is completed, examiner, examiner will see if the system meets the requirement. And uh, like for example, if you have to create a user account, it does not really matter that if you used VI editor to manage to create the user or you used a graphical tool to create the user or you configured or created a user manually by editing the command, uh, editing the file directly, it really does not matter. But the end result should be the user must exist. Hardware requirement for RHL 8. RHL 8 can be installed only on 64-bit systems. All software is written for a specific computer architecture. Even when a manufacturer create a device for CPU platform, it may not work with Linux, let me tell you. Before getting started, consult the hardware compatibility list at the Reddit website. RHL 8 has a built-in 
has been built for variety of architectures but you can focus on Intel or AMD 64-bit or x86 64-bit architecture for the RHCSA exam. The supported architecture for uh, Red Hat Linux are three basic different 64-bit CPU architectures Intel AMD 64 or x86 64-bit architecture, IBM Power 7 or IBM System Z. If you are running a Linux machine, you can check what architecture you are uh, running with, which architecture you have by using the command uname-p. To configure virtual machines on CentOS 8, choose a system that supports hardware-assisted virtualization along with BIOS or Universal Extensible Firmware Interface or UEFI menu options that allow you that allows you to activate hardware assisted virtualization a configuration that support hardware assisted virtualization will have either vmx which is for intel based architecture or svm which is for S amd these flags in the proc cpu info file on linux based systems ram requirement for basic Intel or AMD based 64 bit architecture, Red Hat officially require 1 GB of RAM. The graphical installer run with a minimum of 512 MB of RAM. Actual memory requirement depends on the load on the system. That can also include the memory requirement for any virtual machine that you might run. The maximum RAM supported by RHL 8 on 64-bit architecture or AMD-based system is 624TB. Huge RAM. Hard drive options. Before loading Linux, BIOS or UEFI has to recognize the active primary partition. This partition should include the Linux boot files. The hard drive is then set up and initialized and boot files are loaded from active primary partition. You should know that the number of drives are has increased to 16 or 24 SATA or CGL attached SCSI or SAS devices. You need both UEFI firmware and GPT based partition disk to boot from drive larger than 2 terabytes. UEFI is a firmware interface that is meant to replace the traditional BIOS system or basic input output system. The GUID or GPT partition table, GUID partition table or GPT partition table that format supports drive larger than 2 terabyte requiring a UEFI firmware to boot. You can install CentOS 8 on a storage area network or SAN volume also. Networking As Linux was originally designed as a clone of Unix, it retains the advantages of Unix as a network operating system. However, not every network component works with Linux. Remember that. That's quite interesting fact. So a number of manufacturers or of uh, wireless network devices have not built in Linux drivers. Linux developers have been working to develop appropriate drivers and to get those drivers incorporated into major distribution including the RHEL 8. There are different type of virtualizations. Virtualization types for example, first is application level versus VM level. Wine is not an emulator. That is Wine, it is a recursive full form, is not an emulator, that is Wine. It supports a single application designed for Microsoft Windows to be installed on Linux. For example, you want to run Internet Explorer, you can run that on Linux by using Wine. A VM level virtualization emulates a complete computer system for the installation of separate guest operating systems. Then we have hosted versus bare metal hypervisor, that is VMware player or VirtualBox, Oracle VirtualBox, which we are going to use, are hosted hypervisors because they run on the top of an existing operating system. VMware ESXi, however, or Citrix Gen Server are bare metal hypervisors. What does it mean? They are installed on the physical machines. They cannot be installed on the existing operating system because they already have uh, the core operating system or bare minimum operating system required for the purpose of the hypervisor. Then we have a para-virtualization versus full virtualization. Full virtualization allows a guest operating system to run unmodified on a hypervisor. 
para virtualization requires specialized drivers to be installed in the guest operating system and then we have kvm kernel virtualization modules it supports the running of multiple operating systems concurrently on the same cpu on rhel or centos based operating systems so if we are going to use kvm on centos uh, on uh, centos 8 or rhel 8 getting red hat enterprise linux once you either purchase a subscription or get approved for an evaluation copy download rhel 8 from this URL we have already done that and we have uh, DVD already almost installed uh, almost downloaded we started that in the previous session I demonstrated this part remember for this you need to have a account on Red Hat dot com and that account has to be a corporate email ID or private email ID not the public email ID if you need a private email ID get in touch with me you have various website various ways to connect to me you can see at the bottom of the website uh, this video also so you can get in touch with me because we are a hosting service provider in uh, Delhi we have a lot of websites we have a lot of domains so I can give you um, email ID at a very nominal cost maybe a dollar two or three that's it not more than that format of downloaded content to be burned as a DVD which was mentioned if you recollect my previous lecture where I gave, demonstrated this uh, we have to burn the DVD or to be used as a network boot CD that is ISO files with source code for associated packages ISO images can be used to set up a VM where the virtual CD or DVD drive hardware points directly to the ISO file we are going to use this in our Oracle virtual base based installation unless you purchase an actual box subscription you have to burn these ISOs yourself of course yes I know it third party rebuilds trademark free a good part good thing to start with to comply with GPL that's very interesting fact team very interesting Red Hat releases the source code because you know what the GPL says general public license it gives you for freedom freedom to use freedom to modify freedom to distribute freedom to study it gives you freedom to use that and that's why uh, you can use any Linux available in the market and you don't have to pay for it we call it as open source software but there's a one constant very interesting fact if you download the source code you make changes to it you have to make it public you have to release the source code that source code will remain open you cannot do that that you downloaded source code compile it make it your own trademark and then sell it with your name and you hide the source code it is not possible that that uh, GPL does not allow you to this so Red Hat also have to comply this with this to comply the GPL Red Hat releases the source code for every RHEL package so GPL requires that Red Hat makes the source code available for its customers does not have to make the binary packages publicly available that's an interesting fact see friends source code means the programs written in C C++ whatever language is being used to develop the software binary means the executable file which actually uh, the language of zeros and one which is understood by the processor or the computer or the machine Microsoft does not uh, release the source code therefore you have to use Windows the way it is given you will not get the source code of Windows therefore you cannot have different brands of Windows you have only one Windows that is Microsoft whereas uh, Linux because you have to release the source code so anybody can put your you know his trademark his logos and his branding colors and everything and uh, release it that is not prohibited because the source code has to be released ultimately and if you, as long as you are releasing the source code uh, you uh, definitely you are complying with the GPL so binary packages need not to be released they can be sold you don't have to make them publicly available you can charge for that but source code you have to make it public so under trademark law Red Hat can prevent others from releasing software with its trademarks such as Red Hat logo so Red Hat can prohibit you from using the software because it contains the logo 
the GPL gives you the right to compile the source code. If they make changes, all they need to do is release their changes under the same license. That's the condition, very important point. Therefore, several third parties have taken this opportunity to remove the trademark from the released source code and have compiled that software into their own rebuilds. I can give you many examples. I use Oracle Linux from the same source code, Scientific Linux from the same source code, CentOS Linux from the same source code. They are virtually the same. Source code availability. RHEL source code is available at this website. Get dot centos.org project rpm let's take a look so this is the git repository for centos and you see the users project all project 8041 project user specific projects 365 and group projects these are the projects and the source code of the projects so this is the source code available for all categories of projects there are nearly 8123 um, packages or projects available in this so, building of a distribution is a bit tricky process, but once done, it has the same functionality as RHEL. Two rebuilds available are, one is commonly uh, Community Enterprise Operating System, that is a Community Enterprise Operating System or CentOS. It includes a number of experienced developers who have been working with RHEL source code since the release of RHEL 3 in 2002. The current board of project include members from Red Hat as well as from the original CentOS core team. Then we have Scientific Linux, developed and supported by experts from Fermi Lab and the European Organization for Nuclear Research, CERN, available at scientificlinux.org. Verify the integrity of your download. For the download from RHSM portal, Red Hat provides checksum based on 256-bit secure hash algorithm. You can check those IESO's files against the given checksum numbers with the SHA 256 sum commands. For example, if you have a Linux machine and the DVD is installed or the ISO is downloaded, you can use this command SHA 256 sum and the name of the ISO file. That's all for this session. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.